Okay, so we just talked about anion gap. Let's talk about the osmol gap for just a second. And the idea behind the osmol gap is that I can measure somebody's osmolality. So we call this measured osmolality. But more often what I'm going to do is just calculate it. And it saves us a step. So our computer systems are going to calculate osmolality based on a couple of things that we find floating around in a patient's blood. And these things are sodium, primarily, plus the other ions that are going to help balance sodium out, plus glucose, plus blood urea nitrogen, or BUN. So to get the calculated osmolality, we just need to add these guys together. However, um, glucose comes as milligrams per deciliter, as does BUN, but sodium and the other ions that we measure in the blood, we typically see as millimoles per liter, or maybe even milliequivalents per liter. And I can't add these two guys together because they're not in similar units. So we can use a couple of factors to clean this up a bit. And it's really pretty simple. So what we do is I get my sodium value, which I can measure, piece of cake, and I'm going to multiply this um, by 1.86. And what that basically means is for every one sodium, we're going to have another 0.86 of ions that are circulating around to balance out um, that sodium. So this is sodium, one, times, or we're using that as a factor to calculate these other ions, like the chloride and the bicarb. So sodium times 1.86 takes care of the ions that I'm worried about, plus the glucose, and we could go through the milligrams per deciliter, into grams per liter, into molarity, um, doing all of that work which is in the presentation, you'll see that really what we can just do is divide my glucose value by 18, and that gets it in terms of milli or in, yeah in terms of millimoles per liter, and likewise with the BUN, I can just divide that by this factor of 2.8. And so when I work all of this out, what I end up with is a molarity or an osmolality, sorry, that is similar in units to the measured osmolality. So let's do one from the book. So the book says find the calculated, well, let's see what's a better one. Yeah, so it's asking you for the, um, let's do number 16 from page 177 in your book. So page 177, I'll see if I can zoom in here so you can see what I'm doing. Um, it's about as far as it wants to zoom. So page 177, number 16. So it says, find the calculated osmolality given a sodium value of 149, a glucose value of, let me see here, 115, and a BUN of 10. And so I do my sodium times 1.86 plus my glucose, which is 110, sorry, 115, over 18, and don't forget your parentheses here, plus 10 over 2.8. So when I crunch up these numbers, I end up with, and I'll go ahead and do it for you here, so 149 times 1.86, gives me 277.14 plus 115 divided by 18, which is 6.388. And then 10 divided by 2.8 is 3.571. So I add these guys all up together, and I get a value of 287.10. If I needed units on that, I could go ahead and call it milliosmoles per kilogram because that is the unit um, for osmolality. Is it's a number of particles per weight of solution. Um, it's very similar to millimoles per liter, but in this case we're talking milliosmoles per kilogram. 
So in this particular problem, we're told that the measured osmolality was 290. So 290 minus my 287.1 gives me a value of, and we're going to go ahead and round away that one, call it either 2.9 or 3.0 milliosmoles per kilogram.